Some 70 million acres of commercial forest land once covered the Pacific Northwest. Large Douglas firs, spruce, hemlock, and cedar trees grew west of the Cascade Range. Some Doug firs grew over 300 feet tall, and some cedars reached 15 feet in diameter. In 1905, there were 189 lumber companies in King County, Washington alone, employing nearly 8,000 people. By 1910, Washington was, the, was one of the nation's largest lumber producing states, and the industry employed almost two thirds of the state's wage earners. This photo was taken around 1905, shows a giant fir tree at the Monroe Logging Company in Carnation, King County, Washington. Notice the length of that crosscut saw. Hello again, everyone. This is Guy Hamlin with Trail Keepers of Oregon. I'm a crew leader with TKO, and this is the third in a series of training videos covering basic or introductory crosscut sawyer information. It's important to mention, however, that this material does not substitute nor qualify for an official Forest Service sanctioned Sawyer training course. This information is generalized background material to be part of an informal discussion for folks new to the volunteer crosscut Sawyer world. And as you'll find out, the crosscut saw world is a subject rich in history a significantly new vocabulary for trail workers and with a lot of rules and best practices to ensure the safety of a saw team and trail visitors alike. A working definition of a volunteer saw team is an informal group of trail workers with a common purpose and various levels of saw competency. Form a saw team with an agreed upon goal of safely clearing logs from a trail. Now contrast this with how similar the business goal definition of a team is in comparison to the goal of a saw team. That is, a team that participates in the planning, problem solving, and decision making to achieve an agreed upon business objective. A saw team is a subset of a trail crew party. There may be several saw teams, each with a saw team leader, working with a trail crew leader. Often, the trail crew leader and saw crew leader are one and the same, but not always. A saw team leader must be in close proximity to the working saw team. It is generally difficult to be both but nearly impossible if you have a dispersed trail crew. The last bullet point needs emphasis. Trust and selflessness are two key components to consider. How do we nurture a team relationship where everyone is concerned and protective for the safety of others on the team? These are most of the static factors impacting the go-no-go -go decision process. We will discuss this go-no-go -go process in more depth in the log binds and cut plan module. The saw team OLEC discussion should also address all of these static factors. There is a lot to consider here, but, but with a little saw team experience, these factors will become more familiar. The human and environmental factors of a saw team are dynamic. By definition, these factors will change during the course of a trail day. The team dynamic is often overlooked, but has a huge impact on the safety of a team. Each human factor com component can be contagious within a team. Team members must learn to constantly assess their own emotions and verbalize their concerns. 
It might be as simple as, I'm tired, can we take a break? Or as complicated as, I'm not comfortable with our plan. More importantly, how does a SAW team leader instruct a SAW team about these dynamic and static factors? And how does the SAW team leader create an environment of inclusiveness where everybody's opinion, question, or concern is valued and important? For many SAW teams, this is a culture change. The challenge is to develop an open communication environment where everybody has a voice. These are open questions at this time for your consideration. In subsequent modules, we will discuss methods for a SAW team to address these topics. It's also been my experience that SAW teams develop a personality of their own, especially if the team has worked together a bit of time. Generally, the SAW team personality will be driven by the attitude and experience of the SAW team lead. The OLEC process which we will cover in subsequent discussions, can be a big help for a SAW team to talk about these concerns in a positive way. These static and dynamic factors that impact a SAW team lead into a discussion of a job site concept called complexity. Now the next slide is a bit overwhelming. But I do want to introduce the Forest Service Complexity Guide and define what complexity means to a Sawyer team. Yes, you're right. There is a lot going on here. The Forest Service defines complexity as a characterization of the cutting situation that determines the level of Sawyer certification needed based on the tree species and crown, amount of material, size, lean, binds, condition of the fiber, topography, stability, and any other factors that will affect the sign operation. Years ago, maybe 10 years or so, what an A, B, or C Sawyer could saw, according to the Forest Service rules, was determined by log diameter. So a bee sawyer could saw any log up to, say, 20 inches. Well, as you can imagine, that metric was inadequate and not safe. There are many factors that can guide a sawyer decision. So for now, this is a guide for the trade-off between a log cut complexity and the qualifications of the Sawyer. We will talk more in depth about complexity in the bind analysis and cut plan module in part six. Each saw crew needs a lead Sawyer, and that must be determined prior to beginning of the project. The saw crew leader will be the person responsible for acquiring the correct equipment, confirming that the emergency and communication plans are in place, and making field work assignments from hazard removal, limbing, and swamping to leading the OLEC job site discussion. There is only one leader on a saw crew. I can't overemphasize that point. All team members must support the saw crew leader Remember, your turn will come to be a SAW team lead. And to emphasize this point, there is no one ideal SAW team lead. SAW team leads can be any gender, age, eth ethnicity, etc. And they are not necessarily the most experienced sawyer on the team. In fact, it's a good practice for C sawyers to mentor B or A sawyers in the role of a SAW team leader. There may be two or three SAW crews, each with a SAW leader, who all work under the organization of the trail party crew leader. 
The trail party crew leader will often facilitate the JHA and create the communication and emergency plans. But the SAW crew leader is singularly responsible for the work plan and safety at their specific job site. Often the trail crew leader and SAW crew leader are one and the same, but not always. A SAW team lead must be in close proximity to the SAW team. It is generally difficult to be both, impossible if you have a dispersed trail crew. Within TKO, we have adopted the policy that all certified sawyers are expected to teach and share their knowledge within the limits and scope of their certification with all other participants on the SAW team. We all benefit, but especially our newer sawyers or those new to the crosscut world. The SAW team needs to be constantly reviewing the surrounding environment and looking for potential hazards, especially before the swamping process begins. All of these factors impact the go, no-go decision process that we will talk about in greater detail in subsequent modules. Before the crew leaves the trailhead, these are the minimum required items to have completed. We will discuss these items in our next video in this series, but they should be familiar to trail party crew leaders. This picture is from a four day dedicated trail party logout in the Trapper Creek Wilderness in 2019. It was our largest tree a 44 inch Douglas fir laying across the trail. It took a WTA team five hours to cut and the team had a great time. Come join us for some crosscut saw logout fun.